It's about informing the people with the facts. To know what's really happening in Thailand. Inside government, business, society. With real players. Talking to leaders and decision makers. Seeking answer with perspective, issues that affect Thailand's future. This is Thailand. This is the Insider Thailand. Sadiq Rab, welcome to a special episode of the Insider. 50 years ago this week, the Association of Southeast Asian Nations, or ASEAN, was formed. Since then, ASEAN has been the platform that unites the country of Southeast Asia under the motto, One Vision, One Identity, One Community. But what does this mean in the 21st century? Now, ASEAN has a combined population of over 600 million people with a huge potential for growth matched also by a great appetite for resources. Geographically, it stands between Northeast Asia and South Asia, the two economic powerhouses that drive global growth. At the same time, ASEAN finds itself at the center of the Asia-Pacific region, where the world's major power interplay to influence numbers of global economic, security and political events. With an ASEAN community established in 2015, ASEAN is pushing hard toward regional economic integration and regional community building process based on a people-centered approach. What does this mean for the ASEAN citizen and what does ASEAN mean to the world? To get an insider's perspective on the direction ASEAN is heading and Thailand's vision for ASEAN, today Mr. Surya Chindawong, Director General of the Department of ASEAN Affairs, the Ministry of Foreign Affairs joins us. So, thank you very much for giving us the honor to be with our program with the Insider this week. ASEAN is now um, 50 years of age. Yes. If ASEAN is human or a person, it is quite mature now. Can we assume that ASEAN is, is mature enough to deal with everything? ASEAN was born in 1967 here in Bangkok, and as you said, it is now 50 years of age. Uh, and if ASEAN were a person, would it be mature? Well, it's difficult to say because people age differently. But if we look at ASEAN as an organization, we have been around for 50 years, so we are quite mature in terms of working with each other, uh, having a sense of being part of the same region and community and having the ability to solve many different problems. Yes. Uh, now, of course, in 67, uh, we were in a region that was at war. Today, we are in a region more or less at peace. And part of it is because of ASEAN. We have been able to create a regional order whereby different countries of different beliefs, of different systems, can work together and coexist. So we are mature now. But the question is, will we be able to solve all the problems? Under the the current circumstances, Yes. what is the, the ASEAN standing in the um, world geopolitical? I would say that ASEAN has a lot of respect uh, in the region and in the international community because it has been able to create a region of peace and stability. And that peace and stability over the last 50 years has helped make ASEAN become an, an organization and a region where there is uh, strong economic growth. Uh, for the last 10 years, the average growth is about 5% and above uh, within ASEAN. So that has created a, a better standard of living compared to several decades ago. So ASEAN is well respected as a regional organization and as a region that has brought about better happiness and prosperity to the peoples of Southeast Asia. We still have to see what more we can do. And let me just share with the viewers and, and the public that um, ASEAN is not resting on its laurels. Uh, we have been successful, but we can do more. Uh, we have many other challenges to face, 
whether it's transnational challenges or whether it's the issue of innovation, uh, what can we do to make innovation work for the people of ASEAN, making sure that uh, no one is left behind. I think that is very important uh, for the ASEAN community. Uh, Thailand's goal has always been that the 10 countries should join hands and move forward together in order to achieve a people-centered community with no one left behind. So there are still, still a lot of things that we have to do, but I would say our standing is pretty much respected in the region and in the international community. What has been the key success of ASEAN so far since its inception? Let me divide it this way uh, in terms of what is cannot be seen and what can be seen. Yes. Uh, what cannot be seen, which many people take for granted, is that peace and stability is now a given uh, it's an assumption that exists. Uh, people take it for granted. Yes. Uh, it was not easy uh, ASEAN, when ASEAN was created uh, 50 years ago, but ASEAN has provided a regional order. And that order has not only been for Southeast Asia, other countries outside the region, region major powers like China, United States, mm -hmm. uh, European Union, uh, Japan, uh, Republic of Korea, Australia, they have come on board and have worked together with ASEAN sharing many norms. Uh, for instance, the Treaty of Amity and Cooperation in Southeast Asia is acceded to by all these major powers. So we have been recognized and accepted as one of the anchors of stability in the region. Mm -hmm. We have provided rules whereby everyone can agree how to work together. Mm -hmm. We have provided what is called the forum and the mechanisms whereby big countries and small countries can get together and solve problems in an equitable manner. Uh, we have created the East Asia Summit, the ASEAN Regional Forum, the ASEAN Defense Ministers Meeting Plus. Uh, these are all important mechanisms that have, are said to be the key success factors of ASEAN. There are also, of course, uh, many tangible things that we could see. Mm -hmm. When, because ASEAN has been created, what has that meant for, I guess, the ordinary people? Yes. For one thing, uh, you don't need visas. When you travel within ASEAN, you really don't need visas if you travel within a certain number of days. Another uh, example is that we are much more connected. Uh, because of ASEAN, we have now uh, highways, we have uh, waterways, uh, we have air links that have made the region much more connected. This is what we call the connectivity, yes. which is an important priority uh, for not only Southeast Asia and Thailand, but also for the wider Asia Pacific region. And then we are also in a better position now in order to meet with common challenges like pandemics. Uh, you may have heard the Zika virus, or whether it's the Ebola, or many, many years ago, it's the SARS. Without ASEAN working together, and also in partnership with countries in the region like China, Japan, and the Republic of Korea, what we call ASEAN plus three, we, would, we won't have the necessary arrangements to deal with these problems. So these are the key successes of ASEAN, and part of the reason why we have been successful is because ASEAN moved together as 10 countries. We use the consensus principle. Some people say it's too slow, but consensus is very important when you have countries of different sizes, of different beliefs. We have to come together, and that is, I think, one of the key ingredients of ASEAN success. What can be seen as you know, our strength? What can be credited to ASEAN is that ASEAN has always been very innovative. We yeah. have always find a way out. Uh, sometimes uh, in the past, uh, when we couldn't find a solution in other fora, ASEAN gets together and comes up with a new solution uh, which the major powers can work with. And in that sense, I think the major powers feel that ASEAN is very useful. And that is why I think the major powers respect the ASEAN centrality in our region. The concept of ASEAN centrality, yes. what is it? ASEAN centrality means not monopoly. Uh, ASEAN cannot work without others. We cannot work by ourselves. But what ASEAN centrality means is that ASEAN is at the center of many different solutions mm. uh, to common problems. Uh, the reason why I say is that it, this is because if there is no ASEAN centrality, what do you have? You will essentially have big powers and major powers making solutions for us. If we don't have ASEAN, if we don't have ASEAN centrality, then the solutions will be made by others. Mm. And then the solution we will have to follow. ASEAN centrality means ASEAN has a role. We have the role to give our opinion and sometimes even to come up with our solutions. And the solutions that are provided by ASEAN are usually very neutral solutions, solutions that are acceptable to all, mm -hmm. solutions that are not favoring one mm -hmm. or side or the other. Well, on the 31st of December 2015, if I'm not wrong, 
uh, ASEAN has become the ASEAN community. So, what are the differences? What are the differences between the old ASEAN and ASEAN community? The 31st of December 2015, as you rightly pointed out, was when ASEAN became from just ASEAN to a community. The question is, what does that community mean? How do we explain to people what is so different? They wake up on the 1st of January. How is ASEAN different now than it was the night before? And I'll be very frank, the change is not sudden. Uh -huh. Why? Because ASEAN evolved over the past 10 years. The community building process has begun 10 years earlier. Ah. In terms of a dramatic change in ASEAN uh, on the day after uh, the community was created, you won't see much dramatic change but it has been gradual. What are some of the key points? Number one, we have now a community vision 2025, a very forward-looking vision, which stresses one most important thing, that is the people, people-centered community. Secondly, we have become more rules-based. Everything now is based on rules. We have different agreements, we have different treaties. Uh, ASEAN, after the charter was created, and it's so much more clear now, ASEAN is an international organization, uh, which means uh, it can sign agreements with other organizations and countries. Uh, this is much more recognized now, but it also means that ASEAN has to be more responsible because we have to be responsible to all the stakeholders. Uh, what else has changed? Um, ASEAN is much more coordinated. If there is an issue that happens in the region or in the global stage, ASEAN has to get together and figure out what to do. What solution can we offer uh, to the world? And one example is sustainable development. This is a very important issue for Thailand, meeting the sustainable development goals. It's an important issue for ASEAN. We have made uh, Thailand is the coordinator within ASEAN on sustainable development cooperation. Why is this important? Because sustainable development is the key mm -hmm. to making sure that the community that is being created since the 31st of December 2015 will be a community that leaves no one behind. Yep. Well, many people, you know, when they come to, to um, you know, when, when they, they hear about um, ASEAN, yes. they think they have nothing to do with it. Oh, yeah, they just think that this is the government affair, this is the government business. How can we you know, convince that, uh, them that they should realize the, the, the ASEAN community, the integration of ASEAN, that it's, you know, something that they would be able to enjoy? the benefit of the integration. What can we do? Well, uh, we have done it at the regional level, let me, but let me give you some examples of what is being done in Thailand uh, to help make sure that the people of Thailand and the peoples of ASEAN know more about ASEAN. We have a project uh, called uh, ASEAN Libraries. Uh, that we establish library rooms in schools throughout the country, uh, throughout almost all the provinces, uh, the provinces in all the regions. Uh, usually rural schools in rural areas, so that children, uh, school children, will be able to understand what ASEAN is about. Uh, we have a project which trains the trainers of people who teach ASEAN or people who want to lecture about ASEAN. So we make sure that people know more about ASEAN in the various academic institutions throughout the country. We have site visits uh, uh, where the ASEAN uh, department goes through different provinces and hold meeting the people and holding workshops and seminars about ASEAN. And we also uh, have, uh, in order to make sure, for example, people with disabilities, uh, blind people, we want to make sure they know about ASEAN as well. So we have developed books uh, that is written in Braille. So these are small efforts and attempts to make sure that the people uh, of Thailand and the peoples of our region get to understand and to know more about ASEAN. But let me just uh, point that I'd like to, under, uh, to stress is that what we need to do more is to make sure that all these stakeholders and people are involved in decision making as well. So we ask their views as to what they think should be done on a certain ASEAN issue. They give some ideas to us and then we work with them in order to make these ideas in reality. We always think about the positive thing. Yes. Uh, that would happen you know, in, in, in um, becoming um, ASEAN community. What about the negative size? The good thing about ASEAN now is that we are more connected. Uh, it's easier to travel within ASEAN. The bad thing, uh, which is the negative side of that, is that it makes it now easier for uh, criminals or organizations to 
abuse or misuse this connectivity. And that is why it is an important priority for both Thailand and for ASEAN to have more effective border management cooperation. Some other negative aspects that we see challenges in ASEAN as well. The fact that SMEs sometimes don't get so much attention. Uh, whenever there is an integration process, the companies that may benefit the most are the companies that are larger, which have good networks. So this is something that ASEAN is trying to address. I know this is something that Thailand is trying to address. We have many important initiatives from uh, His Excellency, the Prime Minister, and from the government to help SMEs, not only nationally, but also in the region as well. And thirdly, I think uh, one important thing is a sense of ASEAN identity. I think we still don't have enough of this. Uh, people are very proud of being Thai, are very proud of being Malaysian, mm -hmm. but sometimes when you talk to people, there is not yet a sense that I am also a citizen of ASEAN. Well, of course, Thailand is um, you know, among the, the uh, founder country or nation of ASEAN. What role Thailand can play yes. in order to, I mean, for the success of ASEAN? The ASEAN, ASEAN as an organization was born in Thailand in 1967. And this is part of the most important legacies or contributions that Thailand has given to us. And, but let me also say that over the past uh, 30, 40, 50 years, at different points in history, Thailand has played a major role in contributing yep. to ASEAN. Uh, for example, the AFTA idea, ASEAN Free Trade uh, Agreement or area, uh, was a Thai initiative which laid the foundations for the ASEAN economic community that we have today. Thailand's role has always been to try to support ASEAN, come up with some initiatives that everyone can support. That has been uh, Thailand's contribution in terms of ASEAN success. And we have been recognized, not only by our friends in ASEAN, but uh, from our partners abroad, that we are an important one called bridge builder. Mm. We link up uh, with ASEAN and the rest of the world. Furthermore, Thailand has always been trying to promote different building blocks uh, which can support the community building process in the long run. And let me just, uh, for example, some of the policies uh, of, of Thailand, uh, the current policies that are important policies for, for ourselves and for the region. For example, connectivity. Uh, we are developing our own links uh, with our neighboring countries and with other regions uh, through Thailand, mm -hmm. uh, transportation links. Does this contribute to ASEAN? Yes because it helps link ASEAN together, and it helps link ASEAN through the, what we call the master plan on ASEAN connectivity mm -hmm. with uh, Northeast Asia, and even with South Asia. There are some policies, uh, for example, uh, Thailand plus one, which is an important policy uh, of this government. What it means is that countries will have to come together, mm -hmm. Thailand and a neighboring country. Uh, for example, Thailand and some of the neighboring countries can get together and promote a certain project idea. Will that help ASEAN? Of course it will help ASEAN because it provides the necessary base of economic growth and stability that will support the community building process. Uh, we have the special economic zones, for example. Uh, how does that contribute to ASEAN? Well, if the special economic zones, they're mostly situated close to our borders with a neighboring country, if that encourages greater trade and investment uh, between our special economic zones and our neighboring countries, that will help promote greater trade and investment within ASEAN itself. Well, um, because, our, because of our political circumstances, you know, some concern about you know, um, Thailand will not play an active role. Mm -hmm. Other countries have been telling us in ASEAN circles, they're saying that Thailand has been more active than before. Mm -hmm. uh, we have many different initiatives that come out. They are uh, pleased with Thailand's contributions to ASEAN. They are pleased with our initiatives and they are pleased that Thailand is sometimes reminding our friends and partners of where the important issues are. Thailand once again would assume the um, chairmanship of ASEAN in 2019. Yes. What can we expect from that? Well, we have always been a strong supporter from ASEAN. The chairmanship of Thailand in 2019 will give us an additional responsibility but I would also say additional opportunities to try to push forward important agendas for the region as a whole. We are now in the process of consulting with not only government agencies, but all stakeholders, academics, civil society organizations, uh, various business leaders, 
on what should be Thailand's priorities in 2019. And there are many different priorities, but let me just try to summarize the general trends. Uh, first of all, we see that we want to use 2019 as the year where we finally try to make ASEAN as people-centered as possible. So what can we do to make sure that people are involved in the decision-making process? The first step is, of course, making sure that everyone has access to ASEAN information. And there are many different initiatives on that, uh, from ASEAN libraries to databases on ASEAN. But also one, what I'd like to highlight is how to make sure that uh, no one is left behind as well. Uh, people with disabilities sometimes do not get access to information. So let me just show, for example, this is now the ASEAN Charter, uh, which, which uh, uh, has been around for almost 10 years mm -hmm. now. Of course, uh, if, you, if you cannot read, uh, if you cannot see, it is difficult to understand. So what we have done is created the ASEAN Charter, which is in Braille. This is uh, 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 it's, um, it's for, for people who cannot see to read. Um, so you cannot see here, perhaps, but it's, it's written in Braille, so that it's, uh, and with this is just one small example of how what we think will be an important priority for us is to make sure that people with disability also get a chance to benefit from us. And so that is, that is, that is uh, one important thing. The key is to leave no one behind. So related to that is promoting human security, making sure we support sustainable development, uh, also in line with the uh, sustainable development goals of the United Nations, uh, to make sure that we support green growth. Uh, we have problems of the environment and climate change. These will have to be addressed. We will have to make sure that there is greater connectivity within ASEAN, but not, not only in ASEAN, but between ASEAN and other regions. And this has to be matched by a good safeguard system in order to protect the connected region from those who will try to misuse it. And of course, uh, we will have to be more resilient to deal with disasters and pandemics. And we will also have to have what is called a flexible ASEAN-centered regional architecture that can help use diplomacy to solve many different crises or flashpoints in the region. These are just a few examples of what we want to achieve when we are chairman of ASEAN in 2019. Just because we would be chairman in 2019 doesn't mean we'll be going alone. We will only be successful if we move together with the other nine countries because we're the same ASEAN family to build a people-centered community that no one is left behind. So that is, I think, our basic approach in 2019. We have about a year and a half to prepare for that. Um, uh, but I'm confident that with support, uh, not only of government agencies, but let me s stress the support from the ordinary people, the support from youths, from the elderly, from civil society organizations, from academics, and from the private sector, we hope to have a very fruitful year in 2019. Well, thank you very much, Director General, for being with us. Of course, it is a great privilege for me and for the insider to have you with us. I'm pretty sure that Thailand will be able to fulfill the ASEAN vision, that is one vision, one identity, and one community. Well, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Looking back at the progress that ASEAN made in the past 50 years, one word came to mind, resilient. What started out as regional grouping to instill working relations between countries at a time of tension and conflict has since transformed into an organization that now lies at the heart of the regional, economic, political and security development in Southeast Asia and indeed the wider Asia-Pacific region. ASEAN has withstood the test of time to the Cold War, global economic slums, financial crisis, and devastating natural disaster. A spirit of cooperation has been maintained that keeps the member state loyal to the ASEAN idea through cooperation, the ASEAN way. Looking ahead at the challenges that lie ahead, ASEAN is entering its 50 years with the better together mindset there is no question that this culture of ASEAN cooperation needs to be continued as our regional challenges become increasingly complex, as does ASEAN role on the world stage. Thank you very much for joining us this week. See you again on next week's program. Sadi Club. <laughs>